Hello and welcome to our today's lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to work on the last part of Unit 4 of Cambridge Primary Mathematics Learners Book 4. And this unit is about probability. Probability is showing how likely something is to happen. We use probability when we are not sure about the possible outcome. So we have two questions in this part. The first question here says, there are 10 sweets in the jar. So we have 10 sweets in this jar. Ben takes a sweet out of the jar without looking. And again it says, are these statements true or false? We see that out of the 10 sweets in the jar, six of them are red, two are blue, one orange, and one yellow. So let's read the statements one by one. In statement A, it says, it is certain that Beth will take a red sweet. A red sweet. We use certain when all the possible outcome is that outcome that we see. But here we don't have all the possible outcomes as red sweet. So we can say that this is false. This is false because all the sweets are not red. If it is all not red, we cannot say that it is certain. We use certain when we are 100% sure of something happening. Statement B says, there is no chance that bait will take a red sweet. This is also false. There are six chances actually. So this one is also false, which says there is no chance. There are chances, but it's not certain. Statement C says there is a good chance that Beth will take a yellow sweet. Actually, a good chance is about 80% sure. But here, the outcome out of 10 sweets is only one, so it's not a good chance. You can say that this is also false. A statement C says, there is a poor chance that Beth will take a blue suit. This one is true. Why it's true? Because the possible outcome to take a blue suit is not match, or we can say it is about 30% or less. So there is a poor chance this one is true. A statement E says, there is a poor chance that Beth will take a green sweet. We see that there is no green sweets in this jar. We can say that this is false. There is actually no chance of taking a green sweet. So we are done with question one. In question two it says, everyone in the group flipped a coin 10 times. Here it says, copy and complete the sentence. The sentence here says, there is something of flipping a tail. You know that a coin has two faces. It has the head and the tail. So there are two possible outcomes and each of them have equal chance of happening. So we can write here that there is an even chance. There is an even chance of flipping a tail. Flipping a tail because the possible outcomes for head and tail is equal. Well, again it says here, here are the outcomes. As I said in the beginning that children or students flip 10 times. Flip the coin 10 times. So at the bottom here, it says, let me scroll a bit up. At the bottom, it says, copy and complete the table to show how many heads and tails there are. To record the data here, I will draw a bigger table over here because the table is very small. So here we have head and tail. So oh, here we have the labels, 
the first one says totally and the second one says total so i will record them one by one for the first students we have one two three four five six seven for the first student we have seven heads so i will use totally one two three four five six seven and we have three tails so for the tails we have three one two three we are done with the first one for the second one we have one two three four we have four heads so one two three four four heads if we have four heads then there will be six tails so one this one completes five two three four five six we have four head four heads and six tails well the second one is also done for the third one we have one two three four five for the third one we have five heads and five tails so i have one here one two three and four and the, this one five and here we have how many tails do we have one two three four five so we have five tails also one two three four five five tails we are done with the third one for the fourth one we have one two three four four heads so i have one poly here so one two three four and we have six tails so one two three four five six this one is also done for the fourth one we have one two three four five five heads and five tails so i will write here one two three four five in the same time we have five tails one two three four five we are done with this one also in the last one we have three heads so one two three for the head if you have three heads there will be seven tails so one two three four five six seven now let's count how many heads and how many tails we have in total so each of the groups here are five one five two five three five four five 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 times five is 25 and 25 plus three is 28 so we have 28 heads how many tails so one two three four five six six times five is 30 and 30 plus two is 32 32 so we can see that in total we have 28 heads and 32 tails we are asked to do until this point so we don't have to write anything else or we don't have to give any extra information about the heads or the tails we just had to record the data which is shown in the figure out here so with this question we are done with the last part of unit 4 of cambridge primary mathematics learners book 4 i hope it helps you learn how to solve problems related to probability and also how to use probability to show the possible outcome in an experiment or anything else and also how to record the data using a tally chart or a frequency table that we have used in question 2 Please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you are new here. Like the video and share the video with your friends, your classmates and your students if you are a teacher. Have a nice time and thank you so much.